If you've seen my videos before, you know that I paint predominantly with acrylic paints, but I also like to try out oils. And naive me thought that the techniques that I use for acrylics are gonna be exactly the same as the techniques that I'd use for oils. How wrong I was. It turns out that I've actually been making my oil paintings much more difficult than they need to be. The good news is I figured out what was going wrong and a really simple way to fix it. I'm going to share the fix with you and I'm also going to show you the process of painting a new oil leopard using these techniques. Let's start off with the problem. When I paint with acrylics, I use water and I use water to thin out my paint, but I also use water to clean my brushes. And as I clean my brushes, I'm transferring more of that water to the paint and it's altering the consistency, making it thinner and thinner and thinner. This is fine with acrylics. Because they dry so fast, you can layer colours over the top of each other and the canvas doesn't get muddy. Now, being self-taught, I've always tried to replicate those acrylic techniques with my oil paintings. So I get all my colours set out, I have my linseed oil out, I have my thinner out, and I have all of the paints on my palette. As I start to paint with the oils, the first few brush strokes go down fine. The issue arises when I want to add colours over the top of the layers that I've already put in, when I'm working wet on wet. The colours just end up mixing together and the canvas just becomes this horrible, muddy mix of paint. And I know a lot of people will be saying here, like, that's what happens with oils, and like, oh, you've got to wait for it to dry, but that's nonsense. I've seen loads of videos of other artists working in Alla Prima with oils and they are able to layer colours on top of each other perfectly with very, very little blending. And I just didn't understand why my paints weren't doing that. And it turns out the answer is really, really simple. It's because of this and the way that I'm using those mineral spirits to clean off the brushes. I essentially use it as a replacement for the water. And that's where things go badly wrong. Every time I clean my brush using that thinner, I then add a little bit of solvent to the paint, altering the consistency every time I clean my brush. What this is doing is thinning out the paint, making it runnier, and as I progress through the painting, there's less and less pigment in that paint. So instead of layering cleanly over each other on that canvas, each brush stroke starts mixing together and creating this horrible runny mess. Now over time, with a lot of practice, I've learned to work with that mess and I just end up working in 8 to 10 layers. It takes time to build up an oil painting and th this is just how oil paintings are supposed to be. But it's not. It's not how it's supposed to be. A much better alternative and something that I just completely overlooked, it's so simple is just save those spirits for the very end of the painting. Essentially, don't use them for cleaning your brush. You can use them, sure, like at the beginning stages of the oil painting, for an underpainting when you want very thin washes, but don't use them throughout the rest of the painting process. Instead, just use your oil medium, like linseed oil or walnut oil, for changing the paint consistency. So, as I said, I was using the thinner to clean my brushes. Instead, what I've learned to do is just wipe my brushes with a piece of paper towel until they're dry. What I've noticed after doing this is the paint goes on much cleaner, the consistency is more constant, and you can layer each colour over the top of each other on that canvas without them getting muddy. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if I'm just dipping my brush into the oil medium and using that as a substitute for the mineral spirits, then Aren't you just going to have the same problem? Are you not just dipping your brush in the oil medium and then bringing it back into the paint, diluting it every time? Well, if you're thinking that, yes, you'd be right. What I've started to do instead is add that medium to my paint before I start painting. That way, you're not constantly adding more medium. Your paint is going to stay the same consistency all the way through that painting. 
It's a much more methodical and controlled approach that just reduces any risk of like drips or things going wrong with your painting. I've also started to avoid mixing colours with my brush. Instead, I've started to use a palette knife. When you're mixing colours together on your palette, to make sure you mix them evenly and you mix them nicely, you do tend to have to have some oil medium in there. And by using a brush, you're not really controlling the amount of oil medium that's going in. So you're changing the consistency every single time. And that's no good. Instead, as I've said, I use a palette knife. It's much easier to mix the paint and you get much more uniformity and control with that mixing process. I also try to pre-mix my colours as much as possible. Now obviously for this leopard painting I've stuck to a grayscale palette. So mixes of black to white. I have six main shades. I have black dark grey, two mid greys, a dark one and a light one, then I have a light grey and finally a white. I've also actually created intermediates from each of these colours as well, giving me 11 total shades. I mixed all these before I started the painting process. Really, for the size of painting I was doing and the complexity of the piece that I was planning, I didn't really need 11 shades. Those first initial six would have been perfectly fine to use throughout the start of the painting. But those intermediates could have been mixed with the palette knife later on in the painting as and when I needed them. This idea doesn't just apply to black and white paintings, it also applies to colour paintings. Study your reference photo and choose your five or six major colours that you see in that painting. Take into account your shadows, your highlights and your midtones, and mix those up first. Create that underpainting using those basic blocks of colour, and then as you progress through your painting, you can then start to mix more colours in smaller quantities for the more refined sections of your painting. Learning this simple trick has really, really improved the way that I paint with oils, and it's made my process so much more efficient. Instead of taking seven, eight, nine, ten layers for an oil painting, I'm now able to get an oil painting completed in two, three or four layers, which is so much better considering you have to wait so long for those oils to dry. My initial Alla Prima underpainting can be so much more detailed and I can add those details and those layers of glazing in very few subsequent layers. It just speeds up that whole process of oil painting and if I'm being honest, it's made oil painting so much more enjoyable for me. I don't make as much of a mess. Everything's just quicker, cleaner, neater. It's definitely a medium that I want to try more. If you'd actually like to see more of the process of painting this leopard and see it in real time, I've got full videos on my Patreon channel where I walk through the entire process from start to finish. I've also included the reference photo so you can paint along with it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then why not check out this video over here where I show you my process for painting a huge realistic lion in oil paints. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.